Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back, and let me just say one thing before we get started with this one. Go grab yourself a snack. This is definitely a snack video. We're going to be here for a while. Don't worry about me, I'm good. I still got a bag of apples over here, so we're set. We have one, two, three, four, we have four apples left, okay? So I'm good, don't worry about me, but yeah, you should go probably find something to eat. Okay, so this is actually going to be a remake, a remaster, as it were, of a video I made like five years ago, which is crazy to think that 2017 was about five years ago now, okay? So it was actually one of my favorite videos I've ever made on the channel, and it was really early in the days when I was talking about One Piece, where I went through all of the Marine ranks, okay? So we went through every single rank of the Marines, talking about the characters that had each rank, and it was just a fun video, and so I was watching it a couple days ago, and I'm like, man, that'd be really cool if I could do that again, and I'm thinking, well, since it's been almost five years, and Oda has introduced a few new characters, a few characters have been promoted, in the Marines since then. Also, through the Vivra cards, Oda has retroactively gone back and, like, given names and ranks to characters that before they didn't have those. Um, also, I can throw in some filler characters, like the great Condoriano. I mean, he was a Marine as well. I mean, he really is the main character of One Piece, but we can include some filler characters and some movie-only characters, like Zephyr and stuff. So I thought, okay, yeah, we can do this again. Also, upon watching that video, I remember that I had a really bad cold. So in that video, I'm very congested and like stuffy nose and I'm like you know talking and you can kind of you know hear that so I'm like all right let's let's redo it again let's do it right this time Barry is here as a uh, vice admiral I guess and we also have Aokiji and um, this is an interesting piece of One Piece merch I've received before this is a uh, smoker but it's erroneously labeled as chief petty officer smoker I mean smoker was probably a chief petty officer but the first time we get introduced to him in the story at Logtown he's a captain and then he becomes a Commodore, and now he's a Vice Admiral, so I just thought that was pretty funny right there, okay? That was, that was like a week before the Straw Hats arrived at Logtown, he got promoted from Chief Petty Officer to Captain. Quite a promotion, I must say! Um, but anyway, yeah. So, uh, let's just dive right into it. We have this giant list here of every single- this isn't even all of them, because there's Marines that, like, when you- when you're talking about filler Marines, there's some that don't even have ranks, so I didn't include them, and I also did not include uh, a lot of, like, the theater productions. All for except one character from a play, because he has a really funny name. So we'll get to him when we get to him. But other than that, here's pretty much every canon Marine, as well as most Marines that have been given a name and a rank from filler arcs, OVAs, TV specials, movies, all that stuff on here. And so let's get started um, with the rank that's not really a rank, but it's kind of a rank. Let's start with Chore Boy, or Zatsuyo. And Zatsuyo in Japanese literally just translates to odd jobs, all right? So this is, of course, the rank that Helmeppo and Kobe held when they kind of became members of the Marines, but not really, because the way that they joined was very, very unusual, because remember back at Shellstown, you had Captain Morgan, that was the cruel Marine that ruled over the entire island. Luffy showed up, freed Zoro. Zoro was the one that cut Morgan down, remember that. It wasn't Luffy that defeated Morgan, it was Zoro, okay? So he cut Morgan down, and then it was Commander Ripper, um, kind of an intimidating name, but he turned out to be a pretty nice guy, all things considered, that took over the, you know, the head of the Marine base at Shellstown, all right? And so Luffy and Zoro both left. They went out to sea to continue their adventure as the Straw Hat Pirates. However, Kobe decided to stay behind. Now, Kobe, though, didn't really, I guess, qualify for the regular enlistment process in the Marines because he was kind of like a chubby kid, I guess. He wasn't very athletic at the time. And so then you had Helmeppo, who was the son of Morgan, who everybody hated, so it was kind of like, all right, what do we do with these two guys that want to join the Marines? Well, Helmeppo did not want to join, but it's like, it was either basically he joins the Marines as a chore boy and just do odd jobs around the base, or they basically just kick him off the island, and Helmeppo, you know, the way that he was back then, he would not have been able to survive on his own in the One Piece world, right? He would have been homeless, essentially. So, basically, that was the best he could get, and on the other side, Kobe, on the flip side of that coin, he wanted to join the Marines so much, so he would take whatever job they gave to him. It's just like, all right, I guess we can find something for you to do, you know, here, take this broom and, uh, you know, sweep up the floor, um, you know, com 
Captain Jim was in the uh, the bathroom this morning, and oh my God, it's a let's just say it's a it's a war zone in there. All right, so have fun. And then you know, Commander Ripper gives him a mop, a bucket, and a broom, and just leaves. Okay, so for several weeks, a few months, that's all Helmeppo and Kobe did, and Helmeppo hated every single minute of it because he's just like, oh, I used to have a nice room, and my dad would take care of everything. I mean, he hated me, but he took care of everything. I didn't have to worry about anything. I could just do whatever. I was basically the boss of this town with my wolf. You know, remember how Meppo had a pet wolf that he would just use to terrorize the townsfolk? But then Kobe was like, this is great. This is the first step to my adventure to become a great admiral. I'm going to be king of the marines, you know? So they're really excited, right? But Shore Boy Zatsuyo is not an official rank. I feel like it was honestly just kind of a rank that Ripper just kind of gave to them because he felt bad for both of their situations, right? I'm sure other Marine bases have chore boys. Maybe it's just like, you know, civilians in the neighborhood that want to help out, but they can't. They don't want to actually join the Marines officially, so they just give them odd jobs. And I'm sure they're paid to do this. But yeah, it's not an official rank of the Marines. That doesn't start until next up, we have the 18th and the lowest official rank in the Marines in One Piece, Seaman Recruit. There are three ranks of seamen, so you better learn them, okay? Seaman Recruit, or Santo Hei. I'll put both the English and the Japanese names down here in the uh, lower third. Actually, do you know what these things are called down here? These, like, little third, like, subtitle bars that show up in, like, news and stuff? They're called Chirons. I never knew that. I, I went to school for television, media, and journalism, and I never knew that. But they're called Chirons, which is, like, the coolest name ever for such, like, a mundane thing. It sounds like the name of, like, a robot lord or something like puny humans you will bow before chiron you know that's pretty cool right so seaman recruit first official rank so this is like if somebody wants to actively join the marines the correct way to follow this procedure would to go to your local marine branch whatever one that is and then walk in and be like you know hello there uh my name is jeremy and i just turned 18 years old and i would very much like to join the navy or the marines they're used interchangeably in one piece right and of course the officer at the marine base would look right at that kid and he would be like no we don't want anybody named Jeremy in the Marines and he would kick him out but then the next guy would come in and be like uh oh, hi my name is Fred I would very much like to join the Marines oh welcome Fred how are you doing come on over here we'll get you all set up all right have you ever fired a gun he's like no well here's a cannon okay so um no I'm sure there's much like how you enlist in the Navy or the Marines in our world there's probably a written test there's probably like a physical you have to go through to make sure that you have good good eyesight and things. Um, so I have a friend that's in the Navy, and recently he actually told me he was interested in becoming a pilot, um, to which that blew my mind, because I'm like, wait a second, whoa, the Navy has airplanes? And he's like, yeah. He's like, but there's the Air Force and the Navy. And he's just like, the Navy has, you know, planes too. You can be a pilot in the Navy. I'm like, Whoa, so that just blew my mind right there. Also, anybody that's actually in the military right now, you know, you probably have a better idea for this stuff than I do. And I actually, because of the last video I made and a few other videos about the Marines, I've had a few people in the military leave comments, and we're going to read a few of those to actually shed some more light on the system that Oda has created. He takes a few liberties with it, but yeah. So yeah, there's probably a physical, there's a written exam, they probably have to pass an interview or whatever, but if they go through all the proper procedures, they become a seaman recruit. And there's only one person that was actually a seaman recruit, like, officially, and that was Ukari. Ukari was a random marine that was at Shelltown. He was one of the marines that was just bullied by Morgans. Uh, not Morgans, Morgan. That's, there's two characters in One Piece, very similar names there. Um, but, you know, Captain Morgan had that giant statue of himself, and he's just like, Lift my statue, you peons! And Ukari was one of, like, the poor marines that was like, I'm sorry, sir, I'm lifting as high as I can. Oh my god, please don't hit me with your axe arm, you know? So you gotta feel bad for Ukari. He kind of drew the uh, the short stick there, becoming a Marine. Like, man, I'm gonna go and make my mom proud. I'm gonna be a Marine. And then, like, he ends up in Shelltown with Morgan. It doesn't work out too well. Now, Fullbody and Django both held this rank of seaman recruit as well. However, they had it through unusual means, okay? So Fullbody was originally a lieutenant, and Django was a pirate. And during the cover page series, Django's Dance Dance Paradise, Fullbody and Django meet each other on Mirrorball Island 
and they become very close friends. However, there's a problem. Django is a pirate, and so he has to be brought before a judge to be passed sentence, probably brought to maybe Impel Down or maybe some other prison. Django didn't have that high of a bounty, so he would probably just get thrown in regular prison. I don't think he would get thrown in Impel Down or, like, executed right away, but the outcome would not have been good for Django, right? However, through the machinations of Django's dance, dance prowess, you know, um, the entire freaking courthouse busts out into a dance number, including the judge and the jury, because this is One Piece, and it's awesome. And because of that, the judge is just like, Oh my, this was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. I don't even know why we were here anymore. What did you do? Oh, that's right, you were a pirate. Okay, alright, um... Well, I'm not gonna throw you in jail, because you are a really great dancer. So, um, oh, okay, alright, alright, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna do. You, Django, you're going to be a Marine now, okay? You're gonna have the rank of Seaman Recruit, and full body, you're a lieutenant, right? Okay, well, not anymore. I'm demoting you, because the judge apparently just has the authority to do this. I'm demoting you to, uh, Seaman Recruit so you can watch Django. So you get a demotion, and you become a Marine, and everything's good, just don't get in any trouble. Oh my god, this was great. So that was the sentence the judge passed, and it actually ended up working out for them, because right now they both hold the rank of Lieutenant Commander. All Right, so it's actually higher than Full Body's original rank. So that's kind of an, an interesting idea for Full Body, that he was this very arrogant, very snobby kind of Marine lieutenant, and he was sort of humbled a bit by being dropped back down to seaman recruit with his friend Django and rising through the ranks under Hina properly, and now they eventually got to the point where they're lieutenant commanders. And also, I would imagine Full Body at this point is a lot stronger than he ever was at the beginning of the story at the Baratier, right? Okay. But yeah, that's, that's seaman recruit. Then we have the 17th rank, Seaman Apprentice, or Nitohei, and uh, there's actually currently nobody that holds the rank of Seaman Apprentice, but considering the fact Apprentice is in the name, I would imagine at this point, I mean, I don't know how it exactly works, and this probably is not how it works in the actual Marines, but this is One Piece. Um, since it's Apprentice, it would be interesting if some of the higher-ranked officers, maybe a few times a year, could actually, like, recruit Seaman Apprentices, like, personally, okay? So they could kind of just be like, hey... You know, this new recruit seems to have promise, you know, is like maybe Hina or Smoker or somebody of higher rank could accept them onto their own ships and their own crews and like guide them in their own way. Kind of like the Magic Knights in uh, Black Clover, where they all stand after the exam and they all like, hey, I want him for the Green Mantis or I want him for the Black Bulls or him for the Golden Dawn. It might be something like that. Um, I'm not really sure if that is how it works or it's just a name, but there's nobody in the story that's ever been a seaman apprentice, so I can't really say one way or the other, okay? So then after Seaman Apprentice, we have Seaman First Class, Itohei, and there's only one individual in the entire story, filler or otherwise, that has been a Seaman First Class, and that's Lines. Lines did his work, damn it, okay? He's the only person that achieved this rank, okay? And he was one of Full Body's men back when Full Body was a lieutenant, so we don't really know what happened to him, but assuming that, like, his rank was stripped, you know, Full Body's rank, so maybe Lines went to another Marine captain or lieutenant and worked under them. Anyway, Lines was the one that was set to guard Gein, and then Gein broke free, and he was one of the Marines that got attacked by Gein as he was escaping full body ship at the Baratier, okay? So, I don't think he died, but he might have. Who knows? But that's Seaman First Class Lines! Alright, so now that we're done with all the Seaman... Um, <laughs> we're moving on to the Petty Officers, which is not nearly as funny. Okay, so we have the 15th rank in the Marines, Petty Officer, or Gocho, also referred to as Petty Officer 3rd Class, because much like the Seaman, there are three classes of Petty Officer, okay? So we have Petty Officer, Gocho, 3rd Class, and uh, the first person we actually have here, there's only two characters that have this rank, and they're both um, filler characters or movie characters. Um, this was Zephyr's rank at one point, when we see in film Z, we go through, like, Zephyr's timeline. Zephyr was a petty officer at one point. And then we also have Komei. Komei was the great tactician dude. He was dressed like the Chinese emperor during that Nebul Nebulandia OVA with Foxy. And anything involving Foxy in this story, I'm not a huge fan of, but I did watch the Nebulandia OVA. It's pretty cool. Luffy punches him. He's one of those marines that, he's one of those characters that follows the whole, like, I'm just gonna make my entire body coated in armament hockey, and then I'm in invincible 
and just like what happened with Virgo and Pika, yeah, it didn't work out too well for uh, for Kome. Luffy punched him really hard, and he was defeated there. He also briefly did join the Foxy Pirates, but yeah, um, he started off as a petty officer, and we see him in the special as a petty officer. He eventually rose through the ranks, and by the time the Straw Hats encounter him at Nebulandia, he is already a vice admiral, and he dresses in this very fancy garb, okay? So yeah, that's that. Also, when you become a petty officer, it seems like at this point, you're able to have, like, change your uh, uniform attire around a little bit to suit your need. So you know how, like, a lot of Marines wear the Justice coat on their back or some variation thereof? That's only available to officers, okay? So if you're an infantry, like here, uh, chore boy all the way up to warrant officer, that's an infantry or sailor class, and then everything from ensign onwards is an officer class, you can have the Justice coat. But when you reach petty officer, you can't wear the justice coat, but it seems like you can at least wear modified clothing a bit Like for example, Kobe's outfit was a little bit different than the standard like standard issue sailor outfit that you get when you first enlist Okay, I wonder if the Marines have like a clothing line like a store you could go to at Marine HQ Which has like a bunch of different stylized Marine outfits and you can maybe get like an outfit tailored to your personal design If you really wanted to as long as it covers the policy of the Marines and the dress code and it's primarily like like blue and white in color because those are the colors of the Marines. I guess you could get like a, a sweater, a turtleneck, a vest. You can kind of get whatever you want. A trench coat, you know? <laughs> That'd be really cool. I want to be a Marine, but I want to be like a dark, mysterious Marine. Can I get like a long trench coat? It's just like, sure, fine, whatever. You know, that would be really funny. And you can kind of start wearing that stuff when you become a petty officer. Okay. So next up, we have the 14th highest rank. We have Chief Petty Officer or Gunso, second class. First up, we have Mashi Kaku, who is a member of the Logtown uh, Marines underneath Smoker and Tashigi, okay? It was also mentioned in one of the video games, I think, that Tashigi was, like, the squad captain uh, that led Mashi Kaku and a few of the other Marines that we saw there at Logtown. I like to think that Mashi Kaku probably stayed behind at Logtown because Smoker and Tashigi kind of, they kind of broke rank a little bit and just left Logtown to go chase after the Straw Hats in the Grand Line, and I'm imagining their superiors were a little upset over that, so they probably did not take all of their men with them from Logtown. They had to leave a few Marines behind to protect the island. And I guess after Smoker, who was the captain, and Tashigi, who was the um, Master Chief Petty Officer, uh, beyond them, I guess it would be Mashikaku who would have been the Chief Petty Officer as the next highest rank. So I guess he would have been left in charge of Logtown. He might still very well be there, for all we know. He might have a higher rank now. He might be a lieutenant or a commander or something, or maybe even a lieutenant commander. Who knows? But yeah, he was probably most likely the one left in charge of Logtown. Um, then we have Shine, who was one of Hina's men that we saw during Alabasta. Not much really else on Shine. We have Asahija. Asahija is a chief petty officer that we see after uh, Thriller Bark. So it was mentioned that, of course, Moria had went all over the world and stolen shadows from not just pirates, but marines and regular civilians all over the world. And so after Luffy defeated Moria at Thriller Bark, the shadows all returned to their original owners. And um, Asahija was one of the marines that had his shadow stolen. His name literally translates to, it's morning, like an, like an explanation, like, you know, it's morning now, you know, and it makes sense because the sun has risen and he can finally stand out in the sun because he got his shadow back, okay? I must say, rather impressive that Asahija was able to maintain the rank of a chief petty officer while not being able to go out in the daylight. That's pretty impressive. He was like, he was like the Batman of the Marines, all right? It's like when the sun goes down, he struck into action, okay? Asahija. Asahija. And then he finally got his shadow back, and he's like, finally, I can live in the light once more, you know? But yeah, you know, that was holding him back. He's probably a vice admiral right now, if we're being honest with you, okay? Um, so after Asahija, we have Straight, and Straight was a, a guy that drove one of the turtle cars during Film Gold, which, by the way, I mean, I know it's not canon, but if you ever wanted vehicles, like automobiles and stuff in the One Piece world, there you go. Go watch Film Gold. It was basically a ripoff of Wacky Race but whatever. So we have Straight, uh, who just literally drove a car really fast. And he also had his Marine companion. He, we don't know his rank, but his name was Curve. All right, so Straight and Curve, because they drive cars really fast. You get it? 
Oda was probably not responsible for coming up with their character designs, although he might have, because Oda likes kind of puns like that. Well, whatever. Um, then we have Morgan, who started off as a chief petty officer at one point. He was a uh, he was that rank, and then he got promoted again to a lieutenant rank before he got promoted again to captain. So that was Captain Morgan's first rank. Um, this was also the rank that Helmeppo had post Eni's lobby. So after Garp recruited Kobe and Helmeppo and began to train them with Bogart and gave them like the special recommendation, Helmeppo was a chief petty officer, and Kobe was a uh, master chief petty officer post Eni's lobby. Very, very impressive, I must say, considering this was only like maybe five or six months maximum since Luffy left Kobe and Helmeppo at uh, Shelltown. Already they achieved this rank. Still infantry, but still very impressive, and Garp himself was their, um, was their uh, master, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we also have... Uh, Minchi, Min Minchi, Minchi. Yeah, okay. We have Minchi, and uh, he was the uh, marine that was uh, present during Goat Island. And I only wrote that one down because I actually do kind of like the Goat Island filler. It was one of the fillers that took place after Alabasta, in between uh, Alabasta and Jaya. The Rainbow Mist was the other one, but Goat Island was also there. And I mean, we get to meet an old man named Zenny who lives on an island filled with goats, and he just wants to be a pirate. And he's an old man, and it's just a really kind of nice filler arc. But anyway, yeah, there. There were a few Marines there that were like the enemy of that little short filler arc, and Minchi was one of them, okay? And he was a Chief Petty Officer, okay? Moving on to the 13th highest ranked Master Chief Petty Officer, or Socho First Class. Alright, so first we have Master Chief from Halo. I feel like I probably made that joke in the first video, but yeah. I've never played Halo! I mean, I think I played it, like, once or twice at a friend's house, but, yeah, is Halo still even going on? Like, is the series still continuing, or is that just something from, like, it's like, oh my god, Matt, Matt stuck in 2012 much? I'm like, I don't know, but I never really played it, but I know there's a character named Master Chief in Halo. So anyway, Master Chief Petty Officer, there's currently nobody of that rank right now, but this was Tashigi's initial rank when we first met her at Logtown, and this was also Kobe's uh, first official rank after Chore Boy when we met him post Eni's Lobby, alright? But right now, nobody has Master Chief Petty Officer, but a very impressive uh, title. I mean, you got Master, you got Chief, Petty kind of brings it down a little bit, but then you have Officer, yeah. It also makes it a little confusing that there's infantry and officer ranks, but in the infantry ranks, there's ranks that have officer in the title. So, whatever. I don't know. But these are also ranks that actually exist in the real Marines, so maybe somebody could let me know. Or in the Navy, right? Because unlike One Piece, the Navy and the Marines are actually different branches of the military in our world. So that also makes it a little confusing. Anyway, so next up, we have the last or the highest rank of the infantry. We have the Warrant Officer or the uh, Juni, okay? And the Warrant Officer is always been a fascinating rank to me because for number one, not a single person much like Seaman Apprentice has ever held this rank in the entirety of One Piece. No canon characters, no filler characters, no OVA characters, no movie characters, no characters from a play, no characters from a holographic 3D experience, which that's actually a thing we're going to get to in a second. Um, yeah, no character ever. And I brought this up, like, how come there's no warrant officers? And some people in the actual Navy reached out and explained this. Okay, um, so this is from David here. As someone in the Navy, I can tell you that there is no seaman first class. The order from lowest to highest in the enlisted is seaman recruit, seaman apprentice, petty officer, petty officer second, petty officer first class, chief, senior, blah, blah, blah. Warrant officer is actually treated as an officer mixes with an enlisted. A warrant officer is treated like an ensign by a senior officer, but like a high, higher officer by a low officer. Does that make any sense? Well, how about this one from Colin? It's funny, but as a soldier in the army, you do not see warrant officers in the actual military, too. They exist, but they are rare and elusive, kind of like unicorns. I've also heard that, like, warrant officer is like, okay, if you're joining the Navy and you're starting as, like, you want to start to go to be an officer, then warrant officer is kind of like that first rank that you sort of jump to. Because, let me explain this, alright? This is something that's very different between the Marines in One Piece and the Marines in real life. In the Marines in One Piece, it's like a straight progression, right? So, like, you start as a seaman recruit, and then you work up the ranks as infantry, and then you become an officer. So it's like one after the other. Like, you've been promoted to ensign, now you've been promoted to lieutenant, now you're a captain, now you're a 
Commodore. Now you're a Vice Admiral, right? Like you're promoted through the ranks. In the actual military, I don't think it really works like that. When you just, like, start as infantry and you end as, like, an admiral, that's not really how it goes. Because I think, you know, infantry and officers have different training. And I guess it's possible to go from, like, infantry right into being an officer. But I don't think that's immediately how it goes. I think officers and infantry are, like, recruited through different processes just at a fundamental level. So don't think of it like you're 18 years old and you join the Marines as a recruit. And then it's like, okay, I'm working my way up through the Navy or the Marines or whatever, and by the time you're 65 years old, I am the Fleet Admiral of the Marines, I mean, or the Navy. I guess it could work out like that if you have a very long and distinguished career, but not necessarily, that's not how it works, okay? So Warrant Officer is in this weird nebulous zone where it is infantry, but it's also an officer rank, but it's not something you hold for a very lengthy period of time. It also might just be the rank that you hold when you're about to be promoted. So like, for example, let's say Tashigi. Tashigi and Kobe both. Tashigi and Kobe were both Master Chief Petty Officers, which is one rank below Warrant Warrant officer. Right before they were officially promoted to an officer rank, they might have been promoted to warrant officer very, very briefly. Like, maybe they only held that rank for, like, a few days or a week or something while all the paperwork got filled out, and they got issued their official, like, justice coats, and then they were promoted to a proper officer rank. Like, like then T Tashigi became an ensign, which is an officer rank, okay? So maybe that's the way you could look at it, but warrant officer, we're probably not going to see any in the One Piece world. Oda did put it on the list as like a maybe a buffer zone in between infantry and officer but we don't get that so we're probably not going to ever see one in the story but i would like to see one at some point actually you know what at this point i've asked enough questions about this i'm just gonna call the navy and then just ask them myself how this stuff works okay yeah hi operator give me the navy you've reached the navy's automated phone service oh my god barry robots are running the navy Everybody, run! Robots have taken over the world! Our world! So moving on now to the officer ranks of the Marines, we have the 11th highest rank, Shoei Ensign. Okay, and Ensign, as I said, Tashigi, this was her promotion after the events of Alabasta. Smoker went from Captain to Commodore, Tashigi went from Master Chief Petty Officer to Ensign, proper officer in the Marines. Also, I brought this up in the first video, but I'll bring it up here now because it's just a factual thing for Tashigi's character. Her breast size does tend to increase with every promotion she gets. Here she is as Master Chief Petty Officer, then as an Ensign, then as a Captain, where she's at right now. And it's just funny, but that's the way that Oda's going with it, okay? We also have Mako. Mako was one of Hina's men that worked under her. We saw him at Alabasta. He's also an Ensign, as well as Daddy Masterson. Daddy Masterson, he was supposed to be in the actual manga. He ended up being in a light novel, and he was in the anime. Oda did want to include him in that whole thing with Usopp in the manga, but he also wanted the Straw Hats to get to the Grand Line by the 100th chapter of the manga, so he had to hurry up the story a little bit and cut a few things in Logtown out, and Daddy Masterson was one of them, but he was an ensign. He actually retired or resigned from the Marines, which doesn't really come up too often in the story, but I guess he decided just to quit the Marines and go be and live with his daughter and be a bounty hunter in his spare time, okay? So, yeah, I guess if you wanted to, you could just quit or resign from the Marines. Hey, that's a question. If you're an officer in the Navy, like let's say you're like a lieutenant or a captain in the Navy, can you just quit if you want to? I imagine like, like when you're an enlisted, like an in infantry, I imagine like you get like you have to stay for like a tour of duty or whatever. I don't know how this works. That's why I'm asking you guys. All right, anyone that's in the military. But if you're just like a captain and you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go run a bakery. Can you just go to your commanding officer and just be like, so putting in my two weeks notice boss bye you know like is that how it works i don't know or do you have to pass like a whole process in order to leave properly i, I don't know how that would work but anyway yeah daddy masterson as an ensign could just leave okay anyway uh then we have this is a new character that i didn't get a chance to talk about last time we have isuka who isuka hold on is uh ace's uh rival in the Ace Light Novel. So we have Ace there, we got Mass Deuce, his first mate, but then we have Ensign Isuka, or Nailing Isuka, named after a bird, and uh, her thing is she has a rapier that she fights with, and she was basically like the smoker to, uh, like she was like, 
Luffy's smoker, but for Ace. Okay, that's basically her deal. Okay, and we get to see a lot of her throughout the events of the light novel. Oda obviously drew her here, like the official artwork and everything. So she's an ensign. She's the lowest officer. Honestly, I would have preferred her rank to be a little bit higher than that because Luffy was already brawling with us a captain by the time they got to Logtown. Okay, and Smoker became his rival there, and then was promoted to Commodore and then Vice Admiral. Ace at this point already has the Logia, the Marimara Nomi, and he's fighting with an ensign now. Isuka was still very strong in her own right, but reading the novel, you kind of get the impression that, like, it wasn't even close. It was actually kind of the flip of Luffy and Smoker, because when Luffy first encountered Smoker at Logtown, he could not beat him. Like, simply, he had no way of fighting against Smoker, who was a Logia, so it was very, very one-sided. Um, and that was, like, Oda trying to showcase that, like, okay, Luffy is strong, sure, but there's a lot of really strong characters coming up in the story, and Smoker, kind of funny now, because Smoker, not really that strong compared to, like, Admirals Yonko right now in the story, but Smoker was a really big badass back in the day. It's kind of flipped with um, Isuka and Ace, where Ace is way stronger than her. Like, you get the impression if Ace wanted to, he could just, like, he can just fire fist Isuka and just, you know, reduce her to nothing and just, like, kill her immediately. But that's not how Ace rolls, okay? But he could if he wanted to, right? But anyway, yeah, Isuka's chasing after Ace, but they end up eventually having sort of, like, I don't want to say, like, a romantic kind of relationship, but it's kind of adorbs if you read the book. There's a moment where they end up at Sabaody together, and she's, like, off-duty wearing civilian clothing, and she just kind of hangs out in a Ferris wheel with Ace and Deuce, and it's just it's just an interesting, it's just a fun scene, all right? But anyway, that's Isuka. She's an ensign. And also, that was, like, you know, Isuka could still appear in the story, much like Mass Deuce and the rest. Like, if Oda wants to incorporate these characters into the canon, and he could totally do that. He already has the designs. So Isuka would have been an ensign uh, when Ace set out on his journey, which was three years before Luffy did, which was actually five years from now in the story, five years in the past. So she was an ensign back then. Maybe that's why Oda did that. So now she could easily be a captain, a commodore. Maybe she's even a rear admiral. Who knows? But that's Isuka, right? All right. So next we have the 10th highest rank, which is the first of the lieutenant ranks. There are three lieutenant ranks. We have lieutenant junior grade, or Chewy. Chewy. Yeah, C-H, the thing, accent over the U, E, is, uh, I's are pronounced as E's in Japanese, so Chewy. All right, so we have Chewbacca, who is a lieutenant junior grade in the Marines in One Piece. Um, you know, he's a pretty strong guy. You know, he's got the bowcaster. That thing is pretty devastating. That could really rock you. Um, by the way, wasn't it ever mentioned that, like, only Wookiees would be able to be strong enough to wield the bowcaster? And didn't, like, Han Solo in one of the new Star Wars movies just pick it up and fire it like no big deal? That's a little weird. Anyway, that's weird. That's like, okay, I don't, I'm not even that huge fan of Star Wars, but now I'm like nitpicking the random things of the movies. Okay, well, anyway, so Lieutenant Junior Grade. Uh, we got Rokukaku. Rokukaku, of course, being uh, one of the uh, officers at Shellstown that was under Morgan. Very fearful of him, uh, but now Morgan is no longer in the picture. I think after Commander Ripper, who is the current head of Shellstown, I think it was Rokukaku um, who was the next in command after him. So he's probably the second in command of Shellstown right now, unless he got promoted as well. Uh, Rokukaku also just means like hexagonal or like six-sided and so his face as you can kind of see is drawn with six sides right there so that's interesting. Um, then we have Stalker. Stalker was the name of the marine that was on the ship when Boa Hancock and Luffy were being escorted to impel down on Momonga's vessel so his uh, commanding officer was Momonga. He was the one that was like you know taking notes on Hancock and everything because Luffy was eating all the meat so that was Stalker and he's like this big guy with like darkened eyes and he was just being really creepy, like kind of like a stalker, like staring through the window, like is like taking notes about Hancock and everything. So yeah, that's that's him. Uh, then we have two Marines that are in the filler arc, the rookie Marine filler arc that was in between Zoe and Totland. Remember when like Luffy and Chopper and Nami and Carrot all dressed up like Marines and they met uh, uh, Grout and they met all of those characters there in the Marine rookie arc? Okay, so we have, and this is great, we have Aunt D. Bonham, all right. And then we have Shimoy Zappa. Bonham and Zappa. They were named after John Bonham and Frank Zappa. I don't know who was in charge of that. It probably was not Oda, but whoever it was... I applaud you, because in the time-honored words of Brock Sampson from the Venture Brothers, John Bonham rocks.
And Frank Zappa does as well. It's Frank Zappa, for God's sake, okay? Anyway, interesting thing. Ant D. Bonham, by the way, his middle initial is not the D, so maybe he does have the will of D, but it's Ant D as in D-E, which must really suck for him, because he's like, wait a second, I have the will of D? Awesome! It's just like, no, you don't have the will of D, you have the will of D, D-E. It's like, oh, that sucks. It's okay, you're still named after one of the greatest drummers of all time. I guess, but... I wish I had the actual Will of D, he's like, whatever. And also, he is the first and only member of the Long Arm Tribe that is a member of the Marines. So, once again, I don't know who was in charge of the Marine rookie arc, but you can tell they actually tried to expand the lore of One Piece a bit. And I love it when they do that, because in pretty much every filler or OVA, you know, Marines are like an obvious pick for being like the enemies of the Straw Hats, okay? So it's like, oh, we're just gonna create a bunch of random Marines, here they go, they go fight the Straw Hats, okay? But this guy actually was a little different, you know, Ant D. Bonham. He was like, okay, how about we make him a member of the Long Arm Tribe? And he joined the Marines. Like, there's giants in the Marines. Why not a member of the Long Arm Tribes? That's pretty cool, right? And, uh, you know, he fought against uh, Luffy, I believe, and Luffy just defeated him there. And then he has a companion, also a lieutenant junior grade, Shimoy Zappa, named after Frank Zappa. He's not like a member of the Long Leg Tribe or anything like that. He's just a regular human, but he has a really cool name, so that's cool. I have the Will of Zappa. The will of Z, okay? And with that will of Z, he will ascend to the top of the rock and roll charts. So moving on to the uh, ninth highest rank, we now have Lieutenant, or Ty. Yeah, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Just Ty. They all wear ties. All right, so Lieutenant, we have Zoto, who was a lieutenant under Momonga. And I love Momonga. This was during when uh, Momonga was waiting for Boa Hancock and he sliced down the, uh, the Sea King and everything. So under, you know, his command is Zoto. Zoto is just Japanese for shiver. Uh, shivering in the cold or maybe shivering when you're scared. So Zoto was like a little fearful Marine. But I really like his outfit. I love his hat. I love his glasses. Zoto actually has a really cool design for just a random Marine that only showed up once. I'll give him A tier. At this point, I start finally breaking down, like, oh, I'm gonna break these down into tier lists. Absolutely, right? Then we have Full Body, who was just a regular lieutenant at the beginning of the story at the Baratier. Uh, he was then demoted to Seaman Recruit, but then promoted again, probably a few times. He probably didn't go from Seaman Recruit all the way to Lieutenant Commander, but then he became a Lieutenant Commander. Okay, at some point there. Also, we cannot forget about Lieutenant in Chief, who was, of course, promoted to Commander in Chief. Rest in peace, Trevor Moore. Next up, we have the 8th highest rank, Lieutenant Commander, or Shosa. And that is, like I said, Helmeppo, Django, and Full Body's current rank in the Marines. We also have Drake. Not Drake, X-Drake, Diaz-Drake. We have just regular Drake, who was a member of the G8 arc. You know, he was actually in the Marines um, in the movies, and also at G8 in the filler arc of the anime. Uh, he was under Jonathan there, okay? So he was, um, he was a Lieutenant Commander. Then we have Hardy, who... Hardy was a Lieutenant Commander during the warship island arc under Commodore, or I guess I should say Fleet Commodore, which isn't even a rank. We'll get to him. Uh, Nelson Royale. And we'll get to that when we get to the Commodore rank, because I've never think I've talked about Nelson a single time, but my god, how have I not talked about this guy a single moment throughout all of these videos I've made, right? But anyway, Hardy was one of his commanding officers. Um, then we have Rapani Pasqua? And he was a lieutenant commander. He was one of the Marines in the uh, Rainbow Mist arc. So if you remember, the whole premise of the Rainbow Mist arc was like time travel before time travel in One Piece before Toki. And so, like, they go in the past and they meet those kids. And then in the future, those kids are all now Marines. And I guess the one that was like the leader of the group was named um, Pasqua. And, you know, he was a lieutenant commander, so he had the highest rank. And all the other kids, we didn't really get to learn their ranks. Uh, but that was in the Rainbow Mist filler. We also then had Brand New, Morgan, and uh, Draw. Now, Brand New and Morgan were both promoted, so Morgan was promoted to Captain, and Brand New was promoted to, uh, I believe, Commodore. Brand New is like the intelligence operative. He's the guy with the uh, green afro and the sunglasses that's always the one that's going over the wanted posters in the story, right? And then uh, we have Draw. Draw was a vice admiral that Ace fought. Um, I don't believe it's, I think it's actually at the end of this book, at the end of the first volume when they arrive at Sabaody. So Ace fights against Draw, who is a vice admiral at this point. He started off as a lieutenant commander, was promoted to vice admiral, and Draw fought against Ace with a pair of flamethrowers on his back, which 
I mean, probably not the smartest move because you're literally strapping a giant tank of highly combustible fuel, like gasoline, on your back, and you're going up against the Logia user. But I guess he was like, well, I'm gonna fight fire with fire. I, I guess, but yeah, Ace just lit his fuel tank on fire and it exploded. So <laughs> I think Draw is still alive. We actually don't know even what he looks like because um, he was never given artwork by uh, Oda, even like sketch art, or, uh, sketch art or anything like that. So we don't know what Draw looks like. Like, but yeah. Um, so then moving on to the seventh highest rank, we have Commander, and that's Chusa. And as for Commander, we have Ripper, who is the current commander of Shelltown. He might actually just be the captain now. He might just be the one that's like in Morgan position at uh, Shellstown. Then we have Glove. Now, Glove is interesting. There are a few Marines here that are given names and ranks in the anime, and they appear in the manga, but they're not given a name or rank in the manga. So for Glove, Glove is a Marine uh, commander that appears during Eni's lobby. He appears during the Buster Call, okay? So he's got like a cool like iron mask, kind of similar to Spondum's, and he has boxing gloves, and that's how he fights. Which, okay, you gotta give it to any Marine that decided like, okay, the primary way I'm gonna fight against the pirates, I'm not gonna use a gun, I'm not going to use a sword. I'm not going to use a machine gun. I'm not going to use a cannon. I'm not going to have a devil fruit. I'm not going to learn hockey. I'm not going to learn Rokushiki. I'm just going to fight with D's hands. I'm just going to put on some boxing gloves and go at it. And he achieved the rank of commander with that philosophy of battle. So way to go, Glove. So yeah, he appears in the manga in like the background, but his name and his uh, rank is given in the anime. And I don't know if whether that's like Oda gave it to the anime department or if the anime department just made it up, okay? But that's, that's what he is. Then we have the governor. The governor from The Walking Dead is a commander in the Marines in One Piece? My god, this is getting very confusing here, okay? Wow, alright, fine, okay. But no, this governor, now... You might not have any idea who this character is, and you know what? I was stumped too, and I was actually very surprised by this, because look, I have not seen every single piece of One Piece media. I have not seen, like, every OVA, every special, everything, but I thought I at least knew about everything, at least, like, in terms of, like, what aired on television, and uh, I was proven wrong here, because this guy, the governor is from the third One Piece TV special, and I never saw that one. And so, yeah, he's like a really suave commander in the Marines. He has like a pet chameleon lizard that he hangs out with, because of course he does. And it was stated that he earned that rank through purely duplicitous means and lying. So basically, he's a big phony. He's a phony, all right? So you can imagine Governor, he like basically just lied on his paperwork and stuff, and he's just like, yeah, um, I sunk seven... 17 pirate ships this month. It's like, wow, 17, really? Actually, I think it was 27. 27, actually, I think it was 70. Wow, 70 pirate ships? That's crazy. We're just promoting you to commander immediately. It's like, oh, well, guys, you don't have to. You know, so that's, I guess, how he achieved the rank through just lying and deceit. Um, and so he achieved that rank, and he was in the third One Piece television special. All right. Then we come to the man. The myth, the god, the devil, the angel, the demon, the the great old one, the everything. Commander Shepard. But that right there is merely his lowly human name. Because we know, Barry, of course, Commander Shepard is truly Master God Emperor Condoriano! Oh, we are not worthy of basking in his glory! He's so beautiful! <laughs> ah. So he appears during the G8 arc. Uh, Robin, you know, disguises herself as him very briefly. Of course, she cannot hold a candle to Condori. I have to move on. I have to move on. If I spend any one more solitary moment even looking at this beautiful visage of a man, then I'm just going to go crazy. We have one more commander. 
Uh, unfortunately, this is, I believe, the first Marine on this list. All the Marines we've talked to up until now, this is the first Marine that is confirmed to be dead. And that is Roshinate uh, Don Quixote. You know, so Doflamingo's brother, who would eventually become Corazon, Corazon, and then he, of course, uh, died. But, you know, his his death was nothing to the greatness of Condoriano. Okay, so um, this is actually really interesting, and I didn't even realize this until now. This is not the reason I'm doing this video, but I did uh, the movie for One Piece D&D on Rustage's Twitch. You know, I DM that session, and one of the characters I included was Roshinate, because I was basically just looking for canon characters to include in the movie, and so I used Avala Pizarro, and then I used Roshinate back when he was still a Marine, okay? And I believe I said he was, like, a lieutenant in my version, because this was like, you know, this was like when Roshinate was, like, 17 years old, and he was still a Marine. But one thing I wanted to bring up here is that when he was a commander, that was before he went undercover um, in Doflamingo's family, okay, as Corazon, okay? So provided that he would have stayed in the Marines, his rank actually might have been a lot higher because his rank is obviously not going to go up while he's undercover, okay? Now, had Corazon actually succeeded in this operation and managed to bring down Doflamingo and save Law and go back to the Marines afterwards, well, Law would have probably been a Marine at that point, but then also I believe Roshinate would have received quite a heavy promotion, and if Roshinate was still alive today, he might very easily have become a Vice Admiral, you know, because this was like 13 years ago he was a commander, okay, and even before a few years of that when he went undercover, okay, so I think he could have easily reached, like, the one of the highest ranks in the Marines at this point, and if he would have gotten away, then Law would have, that actually is a good what-if scenario, I might do a video on that, I'm not going to go into it more than that, because I might go into a what-if on how that would have worked if Roshinade's plan actually succeeded, okay, and Doflamingo was brought down right there, um, so yeah. But those are the commanders. Next up, we have the captains, or Taisa, which is the sixth highest rank. We got Kobe. We got Shu, who is the guy that has the rust rust fruit that destroyed the Yubashiri. We got Gorilla, who is the captain we saw at Baljimore. He was the Marine that arrived there after the events of the Nightmare of Baljimore, after Frankie blew up the entire island. And so the local civilians were telling him, like, oh, there's this guy. He looks like a gorilla. And Gorilla's like, oh, you mean to tell me there's some guy looking like a gorilla running around? Sorry, I find that hard to believe. And the funny thing is, he looks like a gorilla. And then eventually, they were the Marines that came to witness Frankie as the sacred beast, the sacred burning beast of Baltimore when he came running out of the cave, wearing the, the tiger pelt lit on fire. And so, Gorilla was the one that went back to the Marines and delivered the report of um, this is Captain Gorilla reporting in from Baltimore. Ah, yes, Captain Gorilla. Please let us know what happened with the horrible tragedy. Did you find the cause? It's like, I, I saw it. I saw it. It was, it was glorious in its beauty. It was a sacred burning beast. It was like a tiger, but it was also a man. It ran across the snow, gleaming in the moonlight. Okay, we'll put that on the official report, I guess. Also, we might want to have you checked for psychiatrics. <laughs> Not psychiatrics, psychedelics. We might have you all psychiatrics and psychedelics. We might want to have you checked for both, you know? Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Captain Gorilla right there. Okay. So next up, we have Sharing Guru, and Sharing Guru, of course, had access to the Sharingan. But no, um, he is a very interesting Marine captain. He showed up at the Buster Call at Eddie's Lobby, but he is an example of the only character I believe so far that has a manga exclusive devil fruit, meaning that there's a devil fruit that was in the manga, but was never in the anime for whatever reason, which is very unusual, which makes me think maybe they just cut it out or they forgot about it for some reason, right? Sharing Guru has the wheel wheel fruit. He can turn his arms into wheels and he can use that to like attack people or like run them over. He can also like pick up a sword or something and like the wheel can turn really fast and so he can add some like torque to it when he's like bringing down his sword or his weapon or whatever he wants. So yeah, that's Sharing Guru. Kind of an interesting character just in the in the fact he has a manga exclusive devil fruit uh then we have tashigi who that's her current rank right now she's a captain in the marines although it's been a while since we've seen tashigi uh she might actually have a higher rank now she might be a commodore or a rear admiral which means her boobs might have gotten even bigger but whatever i, I don't know i don't set the rules this is oda who sets the rules here okay so then we have Nezumi, who was the rat marine that was helping out Arlong during that uh, arc. Um, I don't think actually Nezumi ever really paid for his uh, crimes, because he's the one that went back to his marine base, and he was the one that radioed the HQ, and that's how Luffy got his first bounty. So I don't really think... 
I mean, I'm, I'm assuming maybe the, the citizens of Kokoyashi, like Genzo and Nojiko, probably told the Marines about what he was doing. So he probably did pay for his crimes. He was probably, like, court-martialed or something. Uh, but who knows? Maybe he threw a dance number and he was able to get out scot-free, basically, as well. But that's Nezumi. Then we have LeMay. And I'm sure you have no idea who LeMay is. LeMay is a video game exclusive Marine from the game, um, for the Game Boy Advanced. Uh, big secret treasure of seven Phantom Islands. So I wonder what the big secret treasure of the seven Phantom Islands are. But yeah, he shows up there, and the only reason I want to show him is because he apparently ate the Pixel Pixel Fruit, allowing him to turn into pixels. He can transform into Game Boy Advance graphics whenever he chooses. Truly a Devil Fruit on par with um, any Logia or Mythical Zone, absolutely. Also, he has a green hat, so he just really likes the color green, I guess. he's Hey, I mean, he's a captain in the Marines. I guess he could pick whatever color he wants, but, you know, typically blue and white is what the Marines go with. Then we have uh, Captain Moore. Moore was the captain for Minchi in the Goat Island arc. So he was just, you know, once again, a random filler Marine there. Um, we have uh, Trap, Captain Trap, who was, what was this called again? This was, okay, One Piece 3D Trap Coaster 2011. This is what this was called, okay? It was, okay, remember that the 11th One Piece movie was the Straw Hat Chase, was like that 3D Straw Hat Chase, like an IMAX 4D kind of thing? It was like that, except it was an OVA, and it was only like 10, 12 minutes long. It was like a special, okay? And so the enemy was a Marine named Captain Trap, and he had like this iron thing over him, and he like, you know, released a bunch of like traps to try to trap the straw hats that was like his thing so okay that's that's that character uh, moving on we then have grout who was in the rookie arc and he was a captain as well he was the one that had that freaky arm that like giant gorilla arm which i don't think was ever actually explained in that filler arc whether or not like it was a mythical zone or a smile like what was that thing he just has like he just ate a devil fruit and his arm went crazy with power i guess it was like it was a strange kind of ability but okay it was he was a cool character so then we have captain morgan that was his rank before he was court-martialed and you know removed from the marines he did escape so he's not in jail he escaped the marines but they obviously kicked him out so he's not allowed anymore probably like a dishonorable discharge and so i would imagine we don't know what he's doing right now but i would imagine he's probably just living in hiding maybe off on some random island in the east blue in the woods and he's like just working as a lumberjack he just has like basically thanos after the events of infinity war he's just hanging out in the woods in a log cabin making some stew that's what Morgan is up to right now, because he has a very distinctive, like, appearance. He can't just walk into town and buy some apples. And just like, hi there, um, my name is Captain Moore, uh, I mean, uh, my name is Hank. And, uh, I just came down from the mountain and I just want to buy some delicious gala apples. He's like, all right, here you go, sir. Okay, thank you. Like, they're going to notice him with the iron jaw and the giant axe arms, so he probably just has to live out in the woods the rest of his life. Um, then we have Smoker, who was captain. Originally, he was promoted. Virgo started out as a captain. I believe he was a captain when Law first met him. He was obviously a pirate that was working undercover for Doflamingo in the Marines, and I believe he was a captain when Law met him, and then he was promoted to vice admiral later. Uh, then Hina was a captain as well. She was promoted to rear admiral. And then we have T-Bone, who dislikes crooked men and crooked sword play, all right? And so T-Bone was the captain that, you know, sliced up the Sea Kings on the track uh, and going from Water 7 to Eni's Lobby on the sea train. And then Zoro cut him down in one move. And now he's actually been promoted to Rear Admiral. I think this was actually revealed relatively recently in the manga because I remember talking about that in a review not too long ago. I'm actually proud of T-Bone. I'm happy that T-Bone got promoted. He deserved it, damn it. Okay, so T-Bone is a Rear Admiral now. Great. All right, so those were the captains. A lot of captains in One Piece. And we're not even getting into pirate captains, okay? So um, now we have Commodore, or Junsho. Commodores include Brand New, who's the intelligence operative that's always the one going off on all the Marines. Like, he's always the one. Actually, I can mimic it perfectly, okay? This is it. This is it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen up. I'm Commodore Brand New, and we got some pirates to talk about today. All right. So first off, we have Pirate Hunter Roranora Zoro. I know the name is a little confusing. He doesn't hunt pirates. Actually, he does hunt pirates, but he's also a pirate with a bounty of 320 million. 
but that bounty is nothing, I repeat, nothing, than Finn Smoke Sanji with a bounty of 330 million berries. I want you to look into these eyes, ladies and gentlemen. These are the eyes of a Vin Smoke. These are the eyes of a Germa. These are the eyes of pure, emotionless, absolutely cold shoulder evil. All right. And then I guess we have Goldie Roger and Monkey D. Luffy. Uh, they're causing problems as well. But out of everybody on this chart, there's one person you gotta pay attention to more than any other. Cotton candy lover, Tony Tony Chopper. You might wonder why we went to the trouble of even printing a wanted poster for him for only a hundred berries. That's literally less than a chocolate bar in most places. But I'll tell you what, it's because we were afraid. We didn't know what he was. We didn't know what force we would have awakened if we gave him a real bounty. So we gave him the only bounty that we can think of where people might actually look out for him. So they could see him coming and they know, they know, that death is on his heels. So that's basically brand new's job right there. He's intelligence operative in the Marines. Okay, so then, so then we have Daigeen. Daigeen was really cool. He was one of the Marines that tried to gain access to Impel Down because after Luffy broke into Impel Down, every the Marines were obviously like, hey, you have a pirate worth 300 million in the prison. Let us in so we can capture him. And Sadie came out with the demon guards and Sadie was like, oh no, this is a Impel Down matter. You will allow us to take care of it. And so Daigeen was pretty cool though. He had like a samurai helmet that he wore. He was a pretty cool dude. Then we have uh, Yari Sugi. Yari Sugi was a Commodore under G5, but because G5 was led by Virgo, the, the children being kidnapped, and then the parents would go to the Marines and be like, please look for these kids. And Yari Sugi was like, we've already looked into it. Captain, I mean, uh, Vice Admiral Virgo looked into these cases personally, and he discovered that they were all accidents at sea. You just gotta live with it. So he was kind of a dick of a Marine. Um, we also see him during Caribou's cover story. He he was one of the Marines that was, like, torturing Caribou. Um, we have Keeban, who Keeban is another example of a Marine that we see in the background in the manga, and then his name and rank are both given during the anime. So whether or not he's an actual Commodore or if his name is even Keeban, I don't know. What is your name? I don't know. And then we have uh, Bielik. Bielik, okay. Bielik was the dude with the weird face. <laughs> he was the dude with the weird face um, that was the enemy during the episode of Luffy uh, OVA, which was also the first time I believe we got to see Kobe and Helmeppo post time skip as a captain and uh, lieutenant commander, respectfully, there. So that's interesting. Um, then we have Fleet Commodore Nelson Royale, which. Oh my god, the time has finally come to talk about this guy. All right. So, <laughs> all right, so first and foremost, Fleet Commodore is not even a rank. Um, I, that's something the anime just invented. Once again, this was early in One Piece. This was the first filler in One Piece, so I can kind of excuse it. But, but going beyond just the rank, look at this guy. How the hell does this guy become a high-ranking officer? Commodore is literally the fifth highest rank in the Marines. I'm including Fleet Admiral in that rank as well. Fleet Admiral, Admiral, Vice Admiral, Rear Admiral, Commodore! Commodore! Alright? He's on the same rank as freaking Smoker. And, uh, Shuzo. Remember Shuzo from the Z's Ambition filler arc? I think we remember Shuzo, right? But no, like, oh my god, that means, that means that when Smoker was promoted from Captain to Commodore at Logtown, Smoker had a moment where he's like, I have finally achieved the same rank as Fleet Commodore Nelson Royale. And you know dreams can come true right there. All right, so let's be let's be lenient here and say Commodore Nelson Royale weighs 800 pounds. <laughs> like let's be let's be like you know um, lenient here. He always stays in his throne. He's like Jabba the Hutt. He can't move. Okay, so his throne is probably also a toilet, I would imagine, because he can't go anywhere, and he just. 
is this really big guy that just sits in a throne all day? He literally has the Marine logo painted on his stomach, and you know he couldn't have done that. He doesn't have the arm dexterity to do that. So you know some poor Marine had to, like, tattoo this on his stomach, all right? And just, like, he's just sweating, and he's like, Ugh, all right, just paint the Marine logo on my stomach. Okay, there we go. It's just like, and he's just like, Capture the straw hat Oh, man, I'm tired. So yeah, that's that's Commodore Jabba the Hutt. So we have Chewbacca and Jabba the Hutt in one piece. Great job, great job. Uh, then we have Smoker, uh, then we have Pudding Pudding, and I don't know if you remember Pudding Pudding. Pudding Pudding sounds like a really stupid name. Sounds like a filler character, actually, when I first heard about him. No, Pudding Pudding is a canon character. Pudding Pudding was the Commodore that actually went to Arlong Park in an attempt to actually liberate the island. So they actually heard about the situation going on with Arlong and Kokoyashi Village and that the Fishmen had taken it over. And Nezumi was the captain that was kind of like suppressing that information, but he had actually heard about it, Pudding Pudding, and he decided, I'm gonna put, an, I'm gonna put a stop to this. And he was very naive in how easy it was going to be to overthrow the island. Maybe he thought his rank was like, oh, I'm the Commodore, I can handle some, some pirates. I can handle the Fishman Pirates. I'll be okay, fine, you know? But um, he did seem to actually care about the civilians, because I remember when he was approaching the island, he was like, all right, men, we have two, you know, objectives. First and foremost, to eliminate the Fishman Pirates, and second, to liberate the island of Kokoyashi, and, you know, make sure civilian casualties are to a minimum and stuff like that. So Hachi actually went out to sea and moved uh, some of the rocks under the ocean to cause a maelstrom and a disruption in the currents that pulled his ship down and just straight up killed him and his entire crew. So, Pudding Pudding is dead. But, I mean, like, at least he tried. I mean, at least it showed that, like, the Marines did learn about Arlong and they tried to save the island, all right? And they were just defeated, right? Um, so then we have uh, Shuzo, who was the enemy during the Z's Ambition filler. Uh, it was uh, right at the beginning of the, um, I think right before they get to Punk Hazard, there was that little movie tie-in with film Z, and that was the enemy there, Shuzo. Uh, he used to be a Commodore, but then he joined, uh, you know, the, the Neo Marines under Zephyr, because that was Zephyr's whole thing, right? All right, so then moving on to my favorite rank in the entire Marines, we have the Rear Admirals! Okay, right. And there wasn't that many Rear Admirals or Shosho. That's also fun to say in Japanese. Show show. That, there wasn't that many of them in the first time I did this video, but there's quite a bit of them now. So first we have Sicily. Sicily was a marine that we see during Marine HQ, uh, during right before, uh, it was during the Sabote Archipelago arc. He was the one that like reported that the Straw Hats and Kid and Law had arrived at the auction house, and he was the one that said like, uh, Captain, I mean, like, I think he was actually addressing Sengoku, so like, Fleet Admiral Sengoku, um, some pirates are attacking the, the human auction house, I mean the, um, the voluntary employment office on Sabote. So he was the one, like, that's the official name the marines give it, because they don't call it the human auction house because slavery but slavery is still a thing but they don't talk about it so they call it the human like voluntary employment office or something which is bullshit okay so yeah that was sicily uh then we have um Aki Hende. Aki Hende was one of the Marines in a battleship that was chasing after the uh, uh, prison escapees of Impel Down. He was the one that was like, you will never escape the gates of justice, and then the gates of justice opened because of Bone Chan's sacrifice, of course. But that was Aki Hende. He had these cool things like earmuffs on his ears. They look cool, I guess. Whatever. Uh, then we have Katakombo. And you know what? Katakombo, I mentioned him in the first video, but I didn't go into detail with him. So Katakombo is I don't think his rank was given last time. I think that's why. I think this was revealed during a Viva card recently. Katakombo is the rear admiral who is also the commanding officer of the entire marine base at the Sabaody Archipelago. So remember, the Sabaody Archipelago has a marine base as the front entrance, and then there's lawless areas all around the island as well. Do you imagine the level of shit that Katakombo has to deal with, okay? He's got a deal. He is the Marine in charge of the place where all of the supernovas have to show up at some point. Every generation. Katakombo is probably like every night, just every, every time of year when the new crop of uh, supernovas show up at the archipelago, he just pours a big glass of just straight Russian vodka and is just like, ugh. Ugh, oh, this crap again. All right. I mean, after the events of Luffy and Law, after the worst generation passed through, he was like, Oh, no, I'm getting too old for this shit. I can't do with this anymore. Not only that, 
but it's also the island where Rayleigh lives. So he also has to deal with people constantly probably reporting into him like rear admiral caught a combo We saw Rayleigh. I'm like, yes, we know he lives on the island it was like, well, aren't you gonna do something about him? Like I can't I can't what do you want me to do? What do you people want me to do? He's dark king silvers Rayleigh I'm Katakombo! I don't have a devil fruit! I have a sword! That's it! <laughs> That's all I have, alright? What do you people want from me? They're just like, buddy, he's Rayleigh! You, he's a bad guy! You need to bring him in! You know what? You know what? You know what? I wouldn't even freaking be surprised if Katakombo had, like, drinking nights with Rayleigh, right? Like, like, somebody goes and reports to him, like, Rayleigh was spotted over at the drinking taverns, the drinking taverns, over there in Grove, you know, 17 or whatever. And Katakombo's like, oh, fine, I guess, because it's like, it's like his job, you know, he has to go, no matter if he can or cannot bring him in, he has to go do something. So, he leaves, goes into the tavern, and Rayleigh's there drinking, and he sits down, and he's just like, Hey, Rayleigh, how you doing? Ah, oh, hey, Katakombo, how you been? I'm like, I'm good. So, did another civilian go up to you and tell you to bring me in? Yep. Uh, you causing any trouble? Nah, nah. I was thinking about hitting up the gambling hall later, though. Alright, just, you know, when you inevitably get noticed. Maybe you can wear a mustache or something, or like a fake pair of glasses. What well, Rayleigh already has a mustache, kind of. Well, he has a goatee and glasses. Maybe wear a wig or something, so somebody doesn't notice you. You know, I have other problems to deal with, Rayleigh, okay? <laughs> you know, so I feel bad for Katakombo. He's also the dude that uh, tried to stop the Straw Hats when they were leaving for the New World, and then Boa Hancock showed up and stopped them. And he was the one that saw Boa Hancock, and he was like, you know, you know, completely infatuated with her. Like, oh my god, she's so beautiful. And so, yeah. But Katakombo, man, being the commanding officer of the Sabaody Archipelago, there is so much bullshit he has to deal with. So I think he has our sympathies, okay? Um, the fact that he has that rank is probably just because nobody else wants to deal with it. Nobody else wants to be promoted and deal with that position. So he just keeps rising through the ranks. It's like, Way to go! You're now Vice Admiral Katakombo. That's great. Can I leave the island? Nope. <laughs> this, is your, this is your base, man. This is what you do. I'm like, ugh. All right. So next up we have Kadar. Uh, who was the Marine in G2? He went up against uh, the Fishman Pirates, uh, the Sun Pirates, way back in the day, and he was defeated by them. He wasn't killed, though, but he was captured by them. Then we have Hina, who was promoted from uh, Captain to Rear Admiral, also following the same logic with Tashigi. Pretty sure her boobs did get bigger from the promotion, so there you go. Uh, T-Bone is currently a Rear Admiral. Then we have Yukimura, who appeared as a filler character in Marine Ford. He was, like, stated by Kobe to, like, Yukimura, the slayer of a thousand men, or something like that, but he was defeated in Marine Ford. Uh, Strawberry used to be the Rear Admiral, but he was promoted. And then Drake uh, was, um, you know, the Rear Admiral. Uh, Diaz Drake was a Rear Admiral before he left to go be a pirate, but that was actually revealed also to be wrong. He's actually working undercover as a super special agent of S.W.O.R.D. And we only know that Kobe and uh, Drake work for S.W.O.R.D., and Drake is like the captain of S.W.O.R.D., so it's probably just a very select group that Drake is the leader of. Maybe like the commanding officer completely is like Sengoku or Garp, um, but that's Drake's official rank, last official rank before he left the Marines to go become member of S.W.O.R.D., okay? Um, but then, yeah. Now we have Vice Admiral. And oh my god, there are so many vice admirals. Look how many vice admirals there are. There are so many vice admirals, okay? Thankfully, I've already done a full video about every vice admiral. There might be a few new ones that we're just finding out now in the last few years, but I made that vice admiral video not, I th actually, I think that was like three years ago, but whatever. Anyway, let's just go down the list. We got Garp, we got Suru, we got John Giant, we got Komil, we got um, Momonga, we got Onigumo, the guy with the spider fruit. We have Doberman, who is not a dog, but has the name of a dog. We have uh, Dalmatian, who is a dog and does have the power of a dog. Then we have Strawberry, the guy with the giant, the guy with the giant head that it was revealed by Oda in an SBS that the sadder that Strawberry becomes, the taller his forehead grows. So he's a pretty sad lad. He has seen some shit in his life, okay? It's just like, I have been a Marine for several decades now. I've seen things. 
And then his head just keeps getting larger. Then we have Yamakaji. Uh, Yamakaji, Strawberry, and Doberman were all um, vice admirals that went to the Buster Call at Denny's Lobby. Then we have LaCroix. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I am, I think that's also the name of a water. But LaCroix and then Ronce, who are both giants that are in the Marines. And I believe it was stated that every giant has a rank of vice admiral. Uh, so John Giant, LaCroix, Ronce, Saul was a vice admiral before he was killed by Aokiji. Uh, then we have Stainless, who is the Vice Admiral that went after Buggy at Kalibali Island. Mozambia, who was the Vice Admiral that was uh, present at uh, the meeting at Marijois after Crocodile was removed from the Warlords. I believe he was one of the Marines that was manipulated by Doflamingo just for his entertainment. Um, Cancer, who along with Smoker are, you know, really big chain smokers in the world, so you gotta be careful. I mean, Smoker has the power of the Moku Moku no Mi. He might be able to avoid getting lung cancer, but Cancer, he smokes as well, too. So, you might want to put down the cigarettes. You might want to quit smoking, Cancer. And then we have Bastille, who was originally, I think, stated to be a giant, but that was corrected because the shortest giants are 12 feet tall. Uh, 12 meters tall, sorry. And, uh, well, actually, Bastille is probably 12 feet tall because he's a pretty tall dude, uh, but he's nowhere near 12 meters tall, okay? He's much shorter than Big Mom, and Big Mom is 8 meters tall, okay? But Bastille is a really tall dude, and he's also Vice Admiral. He was one, along with Maynard, that went to dress Rose. So. And then we have Smoker, who's currently a Vice Admiral. Then we have Draw, who I said previously was the Vice Admiral that Ace defeated at the end of this light novel. Then we have Gion and Tokikake. Tokikake, yes. Uh, who are Momosagi and Brown Pig, respectfully, that were both uh, Pink Rabbit and Brown Pig, that were SBS characters, okay? So somebody basically created them in an SBS, and Oda actually turned them into real characters in One Piece. So that's really cool. And not just characters that don't do anything. Like, they actually appear during Reverie, and they talk to Garp, and they bring up questions and stuff. So Gion and Tokikake, all right? And I believe that he has a crush on her, but he doesn't return his feelings. So unfortunate. But, you know, they're vice admirals uh then we have nazu ketagari and he is also an sbs character that oda drew with the funny ponytails or whatever this is the character he's a vice admiral that is in charge of all of the marines titles right so when it comes to the marine titles for the admirals like green bull you know um uh fuji tora you know or purple uh tiger you know uh yellow monkey blue pheasant red dog he's the one that comes up with those nicknames he has a job i imagine that's not his main job he is a vice admiral he does other vice admiral stuff but he is the guy that is in charge of coming up with titles for Marines, okay? So he's kind of like that. He might do it for pirates, too. I, I don't know, because somebody has to give the pirates all their, like, epithets and everything like that, right? So, yeah, it's funny, though. It's, it's really funny that Oda created this character just for that purpose. Uh, then we have Jonathan, who is a filler character from GA, but he is one of my favorite characters ever. I would just love to see Jonathan just drawn by Oda in the manga. Even if it's just like a cover page, like like a cover page thing, like here's, you know, Vice Admiral Jonathan playing chess or whatever, and that's all it is, like a fan request. I would love to see that. I just want him to be a canon character so bad. It's like 90% because of the mustache, but also because he was a fairly tactical character. He did not adhere to that same logic of like, I'm a really angry Marine, or I'm a really strong Marine, or I'm a really angry and a really strong Marine, or like that governor guy that's like, I'm a very weaselly Marine. <laughs> Nothing like that. Like he was calm, he was a nice guy, he was a good leader, and he was a tactical individual that was like, okay, you know, when Luffy and the Straw Hats invaded his base, he not only tried to capture them, he also wanted to use this as a learning exercise for his men. So, he was a good admiral, and it's funny because in the anime, it was stated he trained under Admiral A Akainu, and it's, so it's funny because Akainu and Jonathan seem like polar opposites now, but maybe Jonathan took something away from Akainu, and he's like, I want to be like Admiral Akainu, but not with the whole absolute justice thing. So he, like, learned how to not act, maybe, uh, through Akainu's tutelage. Um, then we have Komei. Um, I don't remember him too well, but here's Komei. Uh, then we have Prody, who was the vice admiral in charge of the marine base during the rookie filler arc. Uh, then we have Gradle. Gradle is the character that was in One Piece dramatic stage, the metal Marine Ford of Remembrance, 3D CG Virtual Reality Special Holographic Event 2018 is when it came out, okay? 
I did not know this existed, but apparently there was this big holographic VR CG kind of show, like with holograms and shit, that you could go to and sit down at, and it was like a little episode of One Piece that played. And the enemy there was Vice Admiral Gradle, who had the power of the metal metal fruit that allowed him to turn into the T-1000 from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Knives and stabbing weapons. And so he like glooped into like liquid metal and he was like fighting the Straw Hats in like this holographic 3D CG show. And that's phenomenal. Okay, I need to look up. I didn't really have time to look into too much involving this um, before I made this video, but I'm going to look that up afterwards if there's some kind of video or something involved from this because that sounds awesome. The T-1000 is in One Piece. Um, then we have, this is the one and only theater character I included on this because he is a Vice Admiral and his name is Vice Admiral Balzac. Vice Admiral Balzac. And he has the power of the bomb bomb fruit, which is basically Mr. Five's ability. He can turn anything into a bomb. So it's kind of like Bambietta's ability from, you know, Bleach. But yeah, I just can't get over the fact of his name. It's just a funny name. And so that's why I put him on the list. Uh, then we have Saul, who died. We have Kuzon, who was promoted. Sakazuki, Borsalino. They were all, you know, they're all admirals at one point, but they were vice admirals before they became admirals. Virgo was a vice admiral, but he was secretly a pirate. The thing about vice admirals, and the reason there's just so many of them, um, is because... Vice Admiral is really the highest rank that most Marines can hope to achieve. It is kind of like the apex for most Marines, okay? Because once you reach that rank, the only two ranks that are higher than that, that are in the official military, are Admiral and Fleet Admiral. There can only be one Fleet Admiral at a time, and there can only be three Admirals at a time, okay? And also, Admirals, I mean, they have to be really strong. I mean, they I guess they don't all necessarily have to have Devil Fruits. I mean, I guess if you're really, really good swordsman or something. Like, Mihawk doesn't have a Devil Fruit, and I would say he definitely is strong enough to be an Admiral if Mihawk was a Marine. Maybe I could do a video about that. Like, what if the Warlords were Marines? That's an interesting video. But anyway, um... You know, so technically speaking, maybe Green Bull might not even have a Devil Fruit for all we know. He, he might not, um, but he probably does. But yeah, so it's just really hard to get a higher rank than that. And Garp didn't even want it. He was offered the position of Admiral. I guess you don't need to have a Devil Fruit because Garp, you know, he was offered the position and he didn't have a Devil Fruit, um, but he turned it down. So a lot of other Marines might actually follow suit because when you become an Admiral... It's not really you're the person that's going around anymore, sailing a boat and going to islands and bringing in pirates. You're not really doing that anymore. You have more like office-y kind of jobs and to, you know, stay guard at headquarters. And you're the guy everybody reports to. And you're the one that has to approve all this stuff. So it's, more, it's much more of an office job. You also have to exhibit your power. But that's only in very few cases, like at Marineford, when there was the execution and Whitebeard attack. Yes, at that point, the admirals got to flex their muscles and show how strong they were, okay? But that's not something they do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? The reason Garp didn't want to become an admiral is because he had the most freedom when he was a vice admiral. So there might be a lot of other vice admirals that might have been offered the position at some point. Maybe Suru was offered the position at one point to be an admiral, but she decided not to. Okay, because she just wanted to stay a vice admiral because then they could still sail around and do kind of whatever they want as a commanding officer there. Okay, so for most Marines, getting to the rank of vice admiral is probably the final, you know, thing that they do. Like, they've achieved vice admiral, we're good, we're set. Um, and a lot of vice admirals could be vice admirals for decades. Like, Garp, Suru, they've been, you know, John Giant, I'm sure they've been vice admirals for decades and decades. And they just have no desire to get promoted or it would be too difficult for them to get promoted because of the, you know, the limitations with the higher ranks. So then we have the second highest rank. We have the Admiral rank, Taisho, and um, I've made so many videos about them, but of course right now the current lineup is Borsalino, Kizaru, Yellow Monkey, Isho, Fujitora, Purple Tiger, and lastly, Ryo Kugyu or Green Bull, who I just realized we actually do not know his real name. Uh, Kizaru's real name is Borsalino, Fujitora's real name is Isho, Ryo Kugyu is just Japanese for Green Bull, so we actually don't know his real name yet, okay? And we don't know really anything about him, honestly, other than the fact that he he's on fasting, he doesn't eat very much, we don't know if he has a devil fruit or what. He's always in silhouette, he has the silhouette silhouette fruit. But of course, some former admirals were Sengoku, before he was promoted to Fleet Admiral, Sakazuki, who is now the current Fleet Admiral, Kuzon, who left after the fight with Akainu, and then Zephyr, uh, during Film Z, was also an admiral before he retired 
retired as well. So yes, I've made several videos about all these characters on Kizaru and his kind of justice, uh, Fujitora and his like past and his ambition and what he's trying to do and trying to change and reform the Marines. Um, even Green Bull and what his devil fruit might be and stuff. I made a few videos about him. Uh, Sakazuki and, you know, uh, Kuzan or Aokiji, same thing as well. So I would say go check out all those videos. If you don't know who the admirals are in One Piece by now, then I don't know what you're doing. They're the strongest, like, fighting force of the Marines. And that also kind of includes the fleet admiral, because I would say there's not really much... I mean, like, Sengoku was really strong, but if you compare Sengoku's strength to Akainu, Aokiji, Kizaru... It was probably more or less on a same level. Like, I don't think that, like, Kizaru was here and Sengoku was, like, way up here. I think if Sengoku was stronger than the average um, admirals, maybe by just a little bit. You could also say he's older, so he has more experience. But Akainu just became the fleet admiral, so I would say his abilities are not really all that stronger than the admirals right now. Like, they're all on the same level, basically. Fleet admiral, or Gensui, is the absolute highest rank you could have in the Marines, and only one officer can have the rank at a time. It used to be Kong, before he left to go be the commander-in-chief in the world government, so that's a world government rank. That has nothing to do with the Marines at that point, although he does oversee the Marines, uh, along with the Cypher Pole and the Warlords. And then we had Sengoku, who was promoted after Kong, and then Sengoku decided to leave, and then Akainu was promoted after that, after his battle with Aokiji. Sengoku is still a Marine. He's the General Inspector, because I imagine they couldn't just let him leave with all the information he knows about over the years. He couldn't just retire like a normal Marine. He does, he can retire. I mean, he's basically like living, I mean, he's basically living in retirement, essentially, but he still, you know, works at Marine HQ and walks around and stuff. He doesn't really have a lot of work to do. Um, and then, of course, we have Garp as well, who left to become an instructor, but he still has the rank of Vice Admiral, just because of, like, an honorary title, because he's, like, the hero of the Marines, right? So, yeah, we do have a few other characters I just wanted to bring up here at the end. Uh, Belmir, who is Nami and Nochiko's adoptive mother. We never found out her rank, but we did know that she was a Marine officer because we see her wearing the Justice coat. So, I like to think that Belmir would have easily been able to be uh, maybe a commander, uh, maybe a captain at the highest rank. Maybe she wasn't, like, a Commodore or Admiral, obviously, but maybe, like, I would say lieutenant to captain at the highest for Belmir. Uh, who left that life to go raise Nami and Nojiko. She's a great mom. Then we have uh, Diaz Barrels, who was Diaz Drake's dad. He used to be a Marine, but he left. Like, he straight up was a traitor to the Marines. I like to imagine he was a fairly high-ranking Marine. So he was an officer. Might have been, like, a captain or maybe even a Commodore before he left, considering Drake made it all the way up to Rear Admiral. Who knows? Um, then we have Attach, who wasn't really a Marine, but he did work for them, and he was the one that was in charge of going around and taking pictures of all the pirates for the wanted posters, right? Well, he left the, the lens cap on his camera like 300 times or something, so he was finally discharged from the Marines, and Morgans actually hired him to work for the World Economic Journal, and we actually see him during the reverie taking pictures of royalty and stuff. That's Attach. Um... But then we also have some other characters, like, for example, like, we have shipwrights, doctors, cooks, like Jessica, Jonathan's wife at, you know, uh, G8, that all have to keep the Marines up and running. So pretty much every job that exists on a pirate ship exists at every single Marine base, including custodial duties. And so I will end it out with this. The last Marine we will discuss here is this man right here. We don't know this guy's name. But I'm going to name him Ted. And he is the custodial chief of the G8 base. So he is the person. He is an officer in the Marines that's in charge of the janitors. The janitors will be the ones that sweep up. The janitors will be the ones that unclog the toilets. The janitors will be the one then that takes out the trash. The janitors are the ones, the unsung heroes of the Marines. A tent hut! <laughs> I just love that. I just love that. Good old Ted. Good old Ted. All right. Well, anyway, that was the video. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We still have to do Elifax. Woo! Elifax. All right. Um... Elephants can um, communicate with each other through a variety of different methods. Uh, they can touch one another with their trunks. Uh, they can smell, of course, sense of smell, with also with their trunks. 
Um, they communicate through uh, vibrations. So because they're very big, they'll like stamp, they stomp on the ground and they can communicate by vibration. So one elephant will stomp on the ground and another elephant can like feel those vibrations through its bones. And so that, that's another way of communicating like, hey, there's a bunch of elephants over there. I can feel the vibrations. And they can also communicate through trumpet calls like, like the, Whoa! but the crazy thing is some of these trumpet calls, you think of an elephant using a trumpet call as something very bombastic and loud, like a freaking, like a, like a, like a siren or something, right? But it turns out some of the trumpet calls are actually at such a high frequency that they're, you know, you unperceivable to the human ear. So that's actually really impressive, right? Like there's certain animals that can create like frequencies that, you know, you can't hear. Um, but you would not think an elephant would be one of those animals because of how big they are. You think every sound an elephant makes would be like a stomp or like a, you know, something like that. But no, it's like they can make sounds so high frequency that humans cannot hear them. So that's pretty cool. And that's today's elephant fact. Mm. So uh, that was an hour and 30 minutes for me to film. Um, I'll have to go back. There's a few parts I messed up. Um, one of the problems, here's a little bit of backstory for this video. Uh, whenever I have to talk about semen recruits, I have the, um, I, I have like the sense of humor of like a five-year-old. So I kept laughing. So I had to redo that part like seven times, but I'll cut that out. Um, okay. Petty officers, master chief petty officers, whatever. A lot of Marines in one piece. I, um... I'll occasionally do that. I'll go back and watch some older videos I've done, and I'll be like, man, that video was a lot of fun to make. You know, how come... I, and it's kind of like a... I don't know if anybody else on on One Piece YouTube deals with this, but it's like, man, I had a lot of fun making that video. I want to do it again, but I don't want to do the exact same video because people are just going to say I'm rehashing or I'm, like, redoing videos. In this case, I think it's fair because it's five years ago at this point. <coughs> so... Me redoing this, I think, is fair. Um, also, there are some new characters I included, like, from fillers and stuff, which I don't think I included the first time. Also, I can just, like, upgrade the thing and everything like that with, like, the Chirons and stuff. Um, I had a lot of fun doing that SpongeBob joke, because I'm like, oh, Squidward, the robots are running the Navy. Not the Navy! And I'm like, I gotta put that in there somewhere. So I'm glad, I'm glad I could work that in. Hmm. Anything else? Anything else I missed in this one? This was a big video. I hope to God everything turned out okay. I hope to God I'm not editing this and like halfway through the video the sound just cuts out. It's always with these big ass videos, man. Always. Um. Let's see. Anybody I forget at the very end here? Who was that Marine? I didn't know who it was. Um. It was somebody. I think I remembered every single character on this list except, like, one person. And I saw their name, Komei. Komei, who is that? He's a vice admiral. Komei. Hmm. If you remember Komei, congratulations. Because I don't. Komei. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's this guy again. All right, all right. So I didn't forget him. It's this guy again. It's the same dude from Nebulandia who I talked about as a petty officer, and he was promoted to a uh, vice admiral later. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, he's dressed like a Chinese, like, emperor. And the Straw Hats go up against him. He's like, the great tactician, Komei. Jonathan, Jonathan's better than him. Jonathan's a way cooler vice admiral that deals with, like, tacticians and stuff. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, this was, like, just really fun. I really like doing this kind of video. The One Piece map video. The, that was, like, one of the first things I did back in, like, 2017 was, like, the One Piece world map. And um, that's been a long time ago now, and we've learned some new things about the world. So I might just do a Geography is Everything just on the map all over again. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Um, but, yeah. This was a fun video. This was fine. Um, the thumbnail, I, I kept very similar to the way that I did the original. So this was the original thumbnail I did. And this video gets, it got some pretty good views, too. It got like 500, 600,000 views or something. And so the new one that I'm going to do is uh, this one. So I didn't want to do anything too different. So it's, it's pretty much the same one. I'm going to title it as like the updated version. But yeah. Anyway, I'm almost done. Almost done with my apple. There we go. All right. Well, anyway. Thanks for watching the video.
Thanks for putting up with me for over an hour and a half. You guys have a good day. Signing out. Oh, did I forget about Very Good? Did I mention Very Good? Holy shit, I forgot about Very Good. Oh my god, no, 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 we're not done yet. Very Good, okay. He's a captain in the Marines. He's the one that fought against Frankie. He can turn his body into balls. Not as funny as uh, Ball Zack, but he can turn into balls. And um, the other thing about him is that he was in the CP9 Independent Report. He was one of the Marines that went after CP9, which is kind of stupid on the Marines' part. Like, we're going to send this guy after, like, nine trained assassins, but whatever. Anyway, that's very good. I didn't want to end the video without talking about very good. Yeah. Well, you guys, have a good one. Teching Barry, signing out.